You remember the story of Robin Hood? Okay, yes, I do. I've watched it many times. Okay, uh, let me remind you. Robin Hood's merry band of men in the woods, those were runaway serfs. Okay. Turns out serfs had a choice. They could stay underneath the Lord on the feudal manor where they were probably born, or they could try to break away from that situation. They could mm -hmm. run into the forest and join up with Robin Hood. They could get beyond the reach of the Lord, whose reach was usually quite limited. Yeah. They could set themselves out to then become what were called free peasants or yeomen or small farmers. There were, in fact, all kinds of options that they had. They were risky. But, you know, leaving your job in, as, in a capitalist economy, that's risky, too. In fact, having a job in capitalism is risky. Right now, we've got 35 million people who just got fired. It turns out employment is risky. Slaves also, by the way, ran away. Slaves also made revolts. Slaves also carved out for themselves much better conditions than they had been born into through a variety of mechanisms. The portrayal of all of them as unfree, which is the way the literature does it, and capitalism as free strikes me as an extraordinary reach since the vast majority of people who are employed by a capitalist, an employer, yeah. either live with that or they're free to quit, in which case their basic option is to go be an employee of somebody else as an employer, which is not quite the escape you might want to recommend. It's a choice, but it's not a choice to escape the system because you really can't do that uh, in most cases. And if you were to suggest that a, an employee can go out and start his own business, most of them really can't. And many of those who do end up in a situation that many small businessmen and women will tell you about, which is they work harder than the people who are employees and look longingly at the possibility of going back to be an employee because however ugly and unpleasant it was, Working for yourself can be even worse. So now let's, you, you touched on a lot of things. So let me take them one at a time. I took notes. Right. I'm taking notes here. So you're the professor. Good. I'm the student. I'm taking notes. Here. All right. So let's talk about Robin Hood. So Robin Hood was taking money from who and giving it to who? He was taking money from the rich and giving it to the poor. That was, he, that was his specialty. But he was, was he, was it really the rich he was taking money from? Or was he taking money from the government who was taxing people too much, Richard. You got to tell the true story of Robin Hood. Well, I grew up in Iran. I watch it a few hundred times. So okay. he wasn't taking money from the rich. He was taking money from the government that are so noble. They want to do such good things for the people. No, 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 no. And he well, was giving it to the people. Maybe you and I read all the Mr. Robin Hood story a little differently. I watch it in Farsi. Maybe the translation was incorrect. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know either. But here's the way I read it. Yeah, he was against the government because he saw the government as in the clutches of the rich. And so for him, whether he stole from a rich traveler going through the forest or he had pitched battles with the sheriff of Nottingham, if you remember his arch enemy, for him, the distinction between the rich people and the politicians those rich people had in their pocket was a difference he didn't care much about he would take from either one of them or both of them and give to the people that they together were putting on the short end of the stick. Yeah, I don't, I don't if, you're, if you're asking about some of the, if, so again, it goes back to the taxation. They were taxing the hell out of the people. The government was, these noble people that eventually a greedy person comes and abuse power. But if there's one part that I get from Robin Hood is the following, you do need uh, laws and you do need lawyers. If you look at China back in 1984, China only had four law schools. You know, the whole Milton Friedman argument when he says you don't really need laws and, you know, just kind of leave it alone. That argument is not going to work 100 percent. You need you need law and you need lawyers. Right. They had four law schools in 1984 and only 2000 lawyers. And China had to make sure they get laws or else the powerful businesses without some sort of regulation and laws would abuse other people. So that part, absolutely, I agree, because today you're seeing a lot of that taking place. 
in many industries, whoever can get the best lobbyists that can pay the most money to people that they can control and campaign with, they can pass a lot of the laws. But when you say right. the rich and the poor, I uh, I sometimes wonder what direction you go from there. As far as the the you know uh, uh, the the people that are employees who cannot be rich, you're saying poor people cannot be rich. Rich, do you know how many people last year filed their taxes that they made a million dollars? How many people in America do you think filed taxes that they made a million dollars? What do you think that number is? I don't know. Income. What do you think? I'm actually curious to know what you think. Good question. No statistic in my head comes to my mind. But This is from the IRS. It's a yeah. government organization that you trust. Yeah. No, no. Listen, you want to paint me as an advocate of the government. I'm not. That's not, I, I don't trust the government. I don't see the government as okay, an independent. Thank God, man, because we're on the same page there. That's yeah. good to hear. Okay. But so I, how, how many well, would, people last year made a half a million dollars? I don't, I, don't, I don't know what a number is. I actually am curious to know what you think. So you and I are having a drink together. I don't know if you drink. We're having coffee, hot chocolate. We're having a beer. And you're talking, we're shooting the you know what. And I say, yeah. Richard, how many people last year made a million dollars in taxes? What would you say? Four million. Four million people, you said, yeah. made a million dollars. Yeah. So the way you did the math was 330 million. You did 1%, a little over 1% of the 330 million, half of them can't work because their kids are, they're older. So working employees, we have hundred, uh, we have 150 million people in America that actually work. Uh, and out of the 150 million that work, 1% makes around 460, 1% makes 460. If you know how they say you're in the 1%, you make 460. 500,000 people last year filed in their income taxes that they made over a million dollars. 500,000. It's not like it's only 18 people. It's not like it's only 62,000 people. It's 500,000 people last year made a million dollars in America. If you and I were talking and you were to say, I climbed Mount Everest and I'm the only one that did it uh, after 65 years old. You're the only one. I'd be like, oh my, I can never do it. I have a hard time sometimes climbing my office here, you know, three stories. I'm going crazy. You climb Mount Everest. That's impossible. I get that argument that not everybody can climb Mount Everest. But if Richard, 500,000 people in America can make a million dollars, don't you think 1 million people can make a million dollars? Don't you think more people can make a million dollars? No. You don't believe that? No, not for one minute. Seriously? Yeah. What's your argument? How do you, how do you argue that part though? So 500,000 Richard made a million dollars last year. Right. It's a lot of people. Right. But in order for there to be 500,000 people who make a million, then there have to be an awful lot of people who make very little. 